Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and welcome to the texturing tutorial on Jinx's grenade. So in the previous tutorials, we modeled it and we also UV mapped it so that it is ready for texturing. And that's what we are going to do next. If you are new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. Software I cover includes Maya, ZBrush and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up your software, and let's go ahead and get started in texturing Jinx's grenade. So should be fun. All right, so this is the 3D model. And the first thing we need to do is export it as a OBJ. So let's select our model. Let's go to File, Export, Selection. And I'm gonna choose an OBJ. And here I'm gonna call it uh, Jinx Grenade, and then everything looks good, export selection. And we're gonna hop into Substance 3D Painter. Okay, almighty Substance. Let's go to File, New. We're going to choose PBR, Let's click on Select, and I'm gonna grab Jinx's Grenade. I'm gonna increase my resolution to 2048, and then click OK. And there it is. Wee. Cool. Here is the 3D model. Here is the UV map. And of course, as always, the first thing we want to do is go to texture set settings. Let's scroll down. Let's click on bake mesh maps. And we want to do, I'm going to do a 2K map. Uh, increase your dilation width. Uh, I don't have an ID map, so I'm going to close that, turn that off. Go to ambient inclusion and increase your secondary rays up to the max and then always ignore back face. Let's go to curvature, increase the same thing. And finally, we're going to go to thickness and increase it as well. Once you're ready, go ahead and click on bake selected textures. Let substance do its thing as it bakes out all of the necessary maps to be able to create all the magic that substance can do. So occlusion, curvature map, a normal map, thickness, position, all sorts of great stuff. It's awesome. That's a nice one. That's thickness. And we're set. Let's go back to layers. And what I'm going to do is double click up here and just call this text or actually just call it texture. All right. And now we just get to play around and see how, what do we want our object to look like. So for example, the first one here is actually more like copper. So what we can do is up here at the top, we can look up for copper and see, okay, there's a copper pure, and then I can drag it into the model. But you'll notice that it actually will texture the whole thing copper. We only want this portion to be used. We, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can right click on our copper here and add a black mask. And then from there, we can either paint it in using uh, right now it's a white paintbrush, so I can go in and be like, oh yeah, I want to see this, which is bottom, but here's the top. Um, the other method that I prefer, which is a little bit more accurate, is actually this tool right here, which is the polygon fill. So what it means is that I can actually go in, and right now it's in white, and I can click on a polygon, and maybe even click and drag it, and it will select that basically make a mask based on this. So that's why it's nice to having the UVs the way we set it up. So it's pretty easy to know which pieces um, work. Another one is actually a 3D model. So if you click on the UV with the model, you can see that it automatically added that copper texture. So pretty cool. Let's go back into paintbrush and this is what we have so far. Not very impressive, but we're starting to get it to work. All right, so let me look at the reference and here it is. And we can see that this is like a dark metal with edges kind of worn out. Same thing with this one. This is a lighter metal and the edges are also kind of worn out. And this is the one that I was trying to mimic. And it's a little bit more pink than I expected. And this is a little bit darker than the bottom. So all of this is really great information that I want to capture. So the big highlights are basically this is lighter. This is also lighter and the rest is pretty dark. And that looks cool. All right. Let's see if we can do something similar. So back in Substance Painter, I want this to be a little bit more, not so shiny. So, and also I want it to be a little bit more pink. So let's click on this and let's scroll down and see if we can change the color just a little bit. So right now it's kind of more peachy. So I'm going to kind of bring it down closer to like a red. 
Now, another thing I want is the roughness. The roughness is pretty shiny right now. So if I increase the roughness, it's going to start making it less shiny. All right. So this is what it was before. And now it's a little bit less shiny. I still want it to make it look like metal, but I don't want it to be, you know, incredibly shiny that it looks like it's brand new. Now, let's say that we want to roughen this up a little bit because it's looking really pretty. If you right click on your mask, your black mask, what we can do is also add a generator. And in this generator, there is no generator selected. So let's click on that. And then we're going to choose curvature. So click on the letter C. And we have curvature. So unfortunately, it impacts the whole thing. So we have to go in and fix that. But the point is, is that now I have a curvature map that is highlighting the edges. Now, it I actually want the opposite effect. I want it to be rough around the edges and shiny um, on the opposite side. So we can invert it by clicking on global invert. And then we can also play with the blur, which I think is too strong right now, and also the balance. So I just want it to be a little bit less, something like that. Now what we're seeing is below that is the white of the page because we don't have anything behind that. So let's look for a type of metal. So I'm going to type in metal and you'll notice that I am now getting the whole library. So if I want to specifically choose one of these materials versus a smart material, um, you know, you just want to make sure you select those. So let's go for a type of metal and usually you want to choose something that's fun. So let's try, there's several, let's just put it underneath here. So now we have this metal looking object and it comes with this brush. So we can take a look at the properties of that and we can either make it bigger, smaller, we can increase the intensity or decrease the intensity. And I actually want to decrease the intensity because I don't need that much, but it just, I'm going to add a little bit just because I think it's kind of cool looking. Um, and makes it a little bit more stylist. But you can see that it does this really nice job in producing these edges. If you want to go back to that curvature map, curv curv curvature map, you can go in and fix the global blur so it's a little bit more blur. You can increase the balance a little bit. You can add the contrast a little bit more or less. And you just kind of play around. All right, so I'm going to say that this is that I don't know what to call it. I'm going to call it a handle. I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to drag these two and put it in the folder. So I'm going to call this my copper material. I can right click, add a black mask. And just like what we did before, I have to make sure my mask is selected. Click on the selection and then choose the model. And just like that, we have just the 3D handle being selected. Uh, there's, it's pretty shiny, so I can go ahead and make some more changes if I want to. So, for example, maybe uh, this metal color is a little strong and I can try to reduce it or increase the roughness. And I can always go back to my copper pure and do the same thing. Just kind of go in and fix the metalness. Oop, you want to make sure you select the color here so I can make it a little bit rougher. And we have something like that. All right, I can always keep tweaking, but I think I'm very happy with this. All right, let's move on to the face. So I'm gonna collapse this. And we have a couple of options here. Let's take a look at the smart material. And I'm looking for something a little bit more rough. So I can grab this still, looks like it's still rust and see what that looks like. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to just kind of drag in and see which one is the, I mean, this looks really cool, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Or is it? Let's see. Well, actually, maybe. I just need to change the colors. All right. So Smart Materials is very similar to what we just made, which is a folder that has a bunch of settings that produce you this really cool result. So the, the challenging part is figure out how to fix this. So for example, maybe I don't want so much dirt. I actually do want the dirt, but the first layer is dirt. The second layer is sharpen. The third one is edges. The first one is more edges. So that's the one that's pretty dramatic, which I might actually calm down a little bit more. So I'm going to go in here and just kind of reduce it. I can always open this up and you can see that it's got its own generator. So this is another place where we can probably calm things down. So let me see if I can mess around with these and see if anything happens. 
There we go. This one actually calms that brush pattern. I'm kind of just reducing it a little bit. There's a metal edge here. And again, we can kind of play around with the grunge amount so you can make it stronger or less. So my recommendation is always to just kind of play around, see what you can produce. And sometimes you just have to mess around with this a lot. Uh, this one has a lot of dirt. So that's the one that gives us really interesting texture. Here we have some bumps. That one's actually pretty strong. So I'm going to get rid of that one and I'm just going to go ahead and delete it because this already has a lot of interesting noise as is. And then finally we get to the base, which is the base color. I'm going to select that base color and change it to a little bit more blue. So give it some color and then we can kind of tweak it from there. So I'm just going to choose kind of like a dark bluish color, bluish grayish color, something like that. And need to go in and do the same thing. So I'm going to keep going in here. I'm going to add some color, go to the blues and just kind of make it more blue. Can you move it up to chain? This is kind of gray, which is fine. That's the dirt. That's kind of like the edge. And I think the dirt is too much. That's the edge. I'm going to play with the edge a little bit. Let me scroll down. Oh, it's got a mask editor here. Let's make sure we have that selected and we can play around with the texture. I'm going to reduce that curvature so it's not so dramatic. And I feel like I made mine more purple than blue. So let me see if I can change that. Let me change it to a little bit lighter color. And the same with this one. All right, that's actually looking pretty fun. Let's scroll up to the top. So this is the steel ruin. Let's right click on it, create a black mask, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna grab this tool, make sure it's in polygons, and we're gonna click on this one and this one. So right off the bat, we get this blue looking object. So very quickly, we can create some fun textures. Next, we're gonna try to get that dark uh, texture. So we have several types of steel here, which are dark. Like, uh, let's grab this one. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna bring it at the bottom. So that one's pretty clean. Let's go to this one. Just gonna be placing a bunch of them, see how it looks like. Uh, that's looking very clean too. Let me undo that. And let's see, let's go for here. Cobalt's looking nice. Let me go back to the reference. Actually, it's pretty dark, almost with purple reddish tones. This is very light. I might have to change the color still. Actually, let me do that really fast. Let me scroll down and just make this pretty light. Just a little bit of a color is fine. Just a hint. Okay. All right. Let's see. Where was I? Iron. Um, hmm. I think I like this one. All right. Let's use still dark aged. I'm going to get rid of this iron old and start playing around with this one. Okay, so the thing about this one is that the edges are really clean. So let's see if we can do something about that. So we have scratches. Okay, so that's the one that's giving it the aged look. And let's click on this and see what they have. They're using a dirt mask editor and a grunge. So let's see which one does the what. So this one... Okay, this is the one that we probably want to focus on. So let's focus on mask editor and let me increase my global balance. And I actually do want to increase my contrast, the texture I can kind of mess around with as well. It's texture one, texture two, ambient occlusion, which doesn't do anything. And then the curvature map. So that's the one that actually makes it a little bit higher contrast. So I'm going to be playing around with textures and also the contrast. Let's 
see what thickness does. We. All right, let's see what the dirt, maybe we can make it do a little bit more stuff on dirt. Let's add a little bit more grunge. Ooh, there we go. And grunge scale, we can kind of play around. That just gives it a little bit more interest in the texture because right now it's very clean. Uh, let's go with grunge amount. Okay. Still very, very clean. Let's see what else we have. We have metal. And we have a finished rough. So this is the one that probably controls the roughness. So you can see there, you can just barely see it in the highlights. So let me see if I can get a little, there we go. Increase that brush intensity and then we could kind of play. So I'm, I'm looking for something kind of dirty and grudgy and that kind of adds, it kind of breaks up the specularity, which is really nice. So let's add a little bit of details along here. So I'm going to make sure that this, this is affected in the steel aged. So I'm going to create a new layer. So it's going to be, and this is going to be my details. Let's go to the alpha map and look for, um, let's see, what's it called? Let's see if I can find something called a bolt. So let's type in bolt. Uh, not exactly. <laughs> let's see if we can find something that will work as an alpha brush. There you go. Go in and click. So it's a little big and you'll notice that since my UVs are overlapping, it works. So let's do that. And then we could still play with the color. So we don't want any color. So let's go ahead and turn off the color. We do want height. We don't want roughness. We just really just want the height and we're just gonna click it. And there we go. Now, if you want to add a little bit of darkness, we can. Let's go ahead and just kind of give us a dark base. So again, let's undo that, add color, something gray, and then we can pink. You can go a little darker. And really quickly, we can get this nice little bolt. Now, if you want to, you can go in and reduce the opacity if you, you know, want it to be a little bit less dramatic. This is affecting the color, so you can kind of make sure that some of that remains. But very quickly, we can create those little bolts, so that's kind of fun. And this is what we have so far. All right, I think the material needs to be fixed a little bit more, so let's go back to this dark steel. And this is for my bolts, so let me type that down. And these are my scratches. This is the metal. So let's take a look at the metal itself. So it's using a substance material node, steel, rust, and wear. And we could take a look at some of its attributes, but we can also replace it with something else. So that looks a little bit grayer, which I kind of like. You can grab that finished rough. And again, we can kind of play around with the texture, the grunge. I'm gonna add a little bit of kind of like a just a slight tint of purple. And I think I want my scratches to be more dramatic. So let's go back to the grunge. Let's add a little bit more. All right. So you just kind of keep playing with this. So let's grab this one again. And I think it's a little bit too. Let me go for a little bit more red. There you go. All right, I think that's a good place to stop now that we have the body and the mouth and the handles. In the next video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create the emissive maps, tweak some of the textures, export the textures, bring them into Maya for a final render. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about Substance Painter. If you did, please like and subscribe. That would be amazing. It's your message to me, letting me know that you like this content and that you want to see more. Take a look at Academic Phoenix Plus for more content, including free ebooks, free tutorials, trainings, and so much more. You will also find my e-courses where I dive deep into Maya's modeling, texturing, and UV mapping. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. 
keep creating, and I will see you next time when we finish texturing the grenade.